What's up, guys? Do we have a treat for you? We are going to be talking about... Dun, dun, dun. The U.S. citizen and the U.S. national or national. We're also going to be talking about the two United States. And it's not going to, don't take my word for it. We're going to take a look at their words. As once again, we found some fire information. And we're going to show you guys just in case they decide to change some things later on. So without further ado, let's take it away. So this section here is from the 8 FAM Foreign Affairs Manual 300, U.S. Citizenship and Nationality. So right here, we can see that nationality is a real thing and that they are two separate things. Right? U.S. Citizenship and nationality. These are two separate things. Nationality is the private, de jure, Citizenship is the de facto, public, and political. All right. So let's take a gander, see what they got to say here. 8 FAM 301.1 to 1 introduction. CT, CITZ 50. G now, keep in mind, guys, I got to point out certain things. So this is the last date that they updated, 2001 or 2021. So if I come back here, we see that it's been changed. We know that somebody's been watching my videos. <laughs> Let's keep going. January 21st, 2021. A. U.S. citizenship may be acquired either at birth or through naturalization subsequent to birth. U.S. laws governing the acquisition of citizenship at birth embody two legal principles. So there are two legal principles here to getting your citizenship and nationality. But here they're going to talk about the citizenship of the U.S. citizen first. Principles. One, just solely, the law of the soil, a rule of common law under which the place of a person's birth determines citizenship. In addition to common law, this principle is embodied in the 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution and the various U.S. citizenship and nationality statutes, and 2. Jus sanguinis, the law of the bloodline, a concept of Roman or civil law under which a person's citizenship is determined. Once again, you got this Roman Latin language in here, Jus soli, soil, so law of the soil, common law, based on the Constitution, and then a right by your bloodline. Once again, talking about Roman law, thought we were in America, but yet we're still using things based on other people, other laws from other lands, but let's keep going. Determined by the citizenship of one or both parents. This rule, frequently called citizenship by descent or derivative citizenship, is not embodied in the U.S. Constitution but such citizenship is granted through statute. As U.S. laws have changed, the requirements for conferring and retaining derivative citizenship have also changed. B. National versus citizen. While okay, so now they're going to be talking about national versus citizen. All right, you guys ready? Let's go. Because now they're telling you right here, these are two separate things. And they wouldn't be talking about them if we didn't have access to them. So let's go. While most people and countries use the terms citizenship and nationality interchangeably, U.S. law differentiates between the two. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Other places use them interchangeably, but U.S. law differentiates between the two. So there is a legal difference.
There's a legal difference between citizenship and nationality. This is what most people don't know. This is why they keep saying, oh, there's no such thing as a national. They're telling you right here, and this is the Foreign Affairs Manual from the Department of State. They said this, not me. Let's keep going. Two, under current law, all U.S. citizens are also U.S. nationals. Did you hear that? Under current law, all U.S. citizens are also U.S. nationals. You get both. But why are there both? Because there's two separate things going on here. But let's keep going. Nationals, but not all U.S. nationals are U.S. citizens. You, that means you have a choice. And it also implies that there are some people in the outskirted areas who are U.S. non-citizen nationals. Okay? So here, pay attention to the words, guys. U.S. nationals. But there are also terms that are U.S. non-citizen nationals. Very similar, but the words are slightly different. This is why people get it confused. Right here, I'm going to highlight it. Look, right here, they talk about in their immigration, there's a U.S. non-citizen national, but up here, they just call it a U.S. national. And there's also a non-citizen national on the passport. These words, though similar, are not completely interchangeable. You could say it's a play on words. You could say they're trying to hide it, whatever you want to say, but there are different things. That's why you must be careful when you depict what and who you are. So let's keep going. Citizens. The term national of the United States. Okay, so now they're throwing in from U.S. national. They started off with the word national. Now, they, now they're showing that there's a U.S. national, and now they're referring to it as a national of the United States. So these all right here are all the same thing. They've changed the, these words over the years, but those three are the same things. And also include the word state citizen that they don't mention here. But let's keep going. Unclassified, you, 8 FAM, 300. Hold on, jumped around on me. Where is it? Ah, right here. Citizens are also U.S. nationals, but not all U.S. nationals are U.S. citizens. The term national of the United States, as defined by statute INA 101-A-22-8 USC 1101-A-22, includes all citizens of the United States and other persons who owe allegiance to the United States but who have not been granted the privilege of citizenship. So they're defining different things going on here because there are those who have not been granted the privilege of citizenship. We as state citizens and nationals born here, we get it. But the people in the outskirt islands don't get this. Politically, we're connected, but they are their own thing. They're under our umbrella, but they are their own thing. Citizenship. One, nationals of the United States who are not citizens owe allegiance to the United States and are entitled to the consular protection of the United States when abroad and to U.S. documentation, such as U.S. passports with appropriate endorsements. Appropriate endorsements. Endorsements. They are not entitled to voting representation in Congress and, under most state laws, are not entitled to vote in federal, state, or local elections except in their place of birth. See 7 FAM 012 and 7 FAM 1300 Appendix B Endorsement 09. Did you hear that? So they have not exactly been hiding the 09 code, we just didn't know where to look. So they're telling you nationals, which you, can, you are by birth, under GPL Styles Manual Section 5.23, 8 U.S.C. 1401A says that you are a national and you are to use the 09 code right here. But what they also put in here is that there are some who are not, who have not been granted the privilege. They're not considered U.S. citizens. Zero 
Two, historically, Congress, through statutes, granted U.S. non-citizen nationality to persons born or inhabiting territory acquired by the United States through conquest or treaty. At one time or other natives and certain other residents of Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, the Philippines, Guam, and the Panama Canal Zone were U.S. non-citizen nationals. Okay, so check it out. So they're telling you here, and you got to love how they have the word were here in red, which represents royalty. And notice how they say it's now U.S. non-citizen nationals. See, how, see the difference in the wording? This is why some of these people get it confused and they give you a hard time is because they think you're talking about you were from the Philippines, Guam, Panama, uh, you know, Guam, Amer America, Samoa, Swain. Those particular people are different. That's why they're called U.S. non-citizen nationals, not non-citizen U.S. nationals. That's a word play. It's not the same thing. That's why Department of State on your websites, you must include the proper codes for us nationals versus these particular nationals. These are different. They want to lump us all together under citizens of the United States, which is a broad term, which does legally include the term national. But thank you to the Department of State and certain parts of the government that are including the term national for us born here in the Republic, in the private, Wisconsinites, Floridians, New Yorkers, um, Californians, so on and so forth, because there is a legal distinct difference and they break it down here. This is the code every one of us needs to have in place. You can include this in your passport, in your explanatory statement, uh, your SS5, whatever else it is, it's right here tells you u.s citizen and nationality are not interchangeably they though some places use them interchangeable in u.s law there is a different there's a difference between the two it says it right here this is their words get it now and get it while it's hot before they change or update or do whatever else to this section keep in mind that i'm pointing out that this little term right here is specifically denoted in red because it means royalty, living. Okay, now let's keep going on so I can prove more of my point. Nationals. See 7 FAM 1120 and 7 FAM 1100 Appendix P. 3. Under current law, only persons born in American Samoa and Swains Island are U.S. non-citizen nationals. Once again, U.S. non-citizen nationals. Nationals, INA 101, A, 29, 8 U.S.C. 1101, A, 29, and INA 308, 1, 8 U.S.C. 1408, C7 FAM 1125, and 4, C7 FAM 1126 regarding the citizenship slash nationality status of persons born on the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. So, what they do is they mention the Northern Mariana Nationals, the American Samoa Nationals, but there's also the national or national of our non-citizen U.S. national different than these. These encompass all of what we have here. All right. We can uh, read on. Islands, CNMI. C. Naturalization, acquisition of U.S. citizenship subsequent to birth. Naturalization is the conferring of nationality of a state upon a person after birth, by any means whatsoever, INA 101, A, 23, 8 U.S.C. 1101, A, 23, or conferring of citizenship upon a person. See INA 310, 8 USC 1421 and INA 311, 8 USC 1422. Naturalization can be granted automatically or pursuant to an application. See 7 FAM 1140. 
d subject to the jurisdiction of the united states all children born in and subject at the time of birth to the jurisdiction of the united states acquire u.s citizenship at birth even if their parents were in the united states illegally at the time of birth one the U.S. Supreme Court examined at length the theories and legal precedents on which the U.S. citizenship laws are based in U.S. v. Wong Kim Ark, 169 U.S. 649, 1898. In particular, the court discussed the types of persons who are subject to U.S. jurisdiction. The court affirmed that a child born in the United States to Chinese parents acquired U.S. citizenship even though the parents were, at the time, racially ineligible for naturalization. 2. The court also concluded that, the 14th Amendment affirms the ancient and fundamental rule of citizenship by birth within the territory, in the allegiance and under the protection of the country, including children here born of resident aliens, with the exceptions or qualifications, as old as the rule itself, of children of foreign sovereigns or their ministers, or born on foreign public ships, or of enemies within and during a hostile occupation of part of our territory, and with the single additional exception of children of members of the Indian tribes owing direct allegiance to their several tribes. The amendment, in clear words and in manifest intent, includes the children born within the territory of the United States, of all other persons, of whatever race or color, domiciled within the United States. Pursuant to this ruling, a. Acquisition of U.S. citizenship generally is not affected by the fact that the parents may be in the United States temporarily or illegally, and that, and b. A child born in an immigration detention center physically located in the United States is considered to have been born in the United States and be subject to its jurisdiction. This is so even if the child's parents have not been legally admitted to the United States and, for immigration purposes, may be viewed as not being in the United States. 8 FAM 301.1 to 2 What is birth in the United States? CT CITZ 45, December 9, 2020. A. INA 101, A 38, 8 USC 1101, A 38, provides that the term United States, when used in a geographical sense, means the continental United States, Alaska, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, Guam, and the Virgin Islands of the United States. Did you hear that? It says when the term United States, not the, just United States, quotations, is used in a geographical sense, that means that there is another definition for the United States. But when used in a geographical sense, it means America, not the U.S corporation under what is it ucc 9-307 location of the debtor united states is a federal corporation states b on november 3rd 1986 public law 94 to 241 approving the covenant to establish a commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands in political union with the United States of America. Did you hear that? In political union. Northern Mariana Islands and some of these other places are in a political union. They are politically with us, but they are not ours. They have a political union with the United States of America. Political union. That means you've got America and then through the U.S. Corp., the political party, they are politically in our jurisdiction. The Mariana Islands in political union. That's one word. I should, then there should be a comma. Then with the United States of America. And up here where it said, means the continental United States, Alaska, Hawaii, this means all of the states, Puerto Rico, Guam, and the Virgin Islands. Now to be politically correct or legally correct, they should have all of the places 
depicted here, but they just have Alaska, Hawaii to abbreviate. So that means there are other places. All the other states are in here. Just because the states aren't mentioned here doesn't mean that they don't they they don't exist or they're not a part of America. They're abbreviating. So really, it, if they would need to, to put all of the places and then say only, that's why they don't see an only. So they're just saying, you know, for example, Alaska, Hawaii, you know, Puerto Rico, you know, all those places, you know. Legally, this is not a correct statement because it does not contain all of the information Keep going, it gets a little bit better. America, Section 506C, took effect. From that point on, the Northern Mariana Islands have been treated as part of the United States for the purposes of INA 301, 8 U.S.C. 1401, and INA 308, 8 U.S.C. 1408, C8 FAM 302.1. C, the Nationality Act of 1940, N.A., Section 101, D. 54 statutes at large 1172, effective January 13, 1941 until December 23, 1952, provided that the term United States when used in a geographical sense means the continental United States, Alaska, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands of the United States. The 1940 Act did not include Guam or the Northern Mariana Islands as coming within the definition of United States. Because the term United States meant America. They only came in under the political sense. All right, so let's check it out. Let's 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 uh, get that heat. Let's move a little forward. States. See the text of the 1940 Act on the Internet, Acquisition of Citizenship, Legal and Regulatory Documents. D. Prior to January 13, 1941, there was no statutory definition of the United States for citizenship purposes. Listen to what they're saying. Prior to 1941, there was no statutory. Okay? Statutory, statutes, corporate. There was no definition of, now look, they got quotations, the United States quotation for citizenship purposes. That means that this was they they def, they there was a change here, and United States meant one thing, and then the United States means a different thing. They're saying before this time there was no difference. So when that 1940 Act came into place, they started saying, "Well, we have to redefine these words. They have multiple meanings now. We have to now look at citizenship and nationality differently now. We have to define these. What areas? Some political, some non resident, non resident. This is when it all started breaking into pieces after that point in time. Purposes. The phrase in the United States as used in. Now, the phrase in. They added the word in because now in means inside the corporation, the paper jurisdiction, the zip codes, legal persons, U.S. citizen. This is where it splits because now you're in something. So they had to define this because now you're in, comma, the United States because the United States means something different than United States. Unclassified, you. D. Prior to January 13, 1941, there was no statutory definition of the United States for citizenship purposes. The phrase in the United States as used in section 1993 of the revised statutes of 1878 clearly includes states that have been admitted to the Union, C8 FAM 102.2. E, INA 304, 
8 U.S.C. 1404, and INA 305, 8 U.S.C. 1405, provide a basis for citizenship of persons born in Alaska and Hawaii, respectively, while they were territories of the United States. Okay. So the citizenship of persons born in Alaska and Hawaii under INA 304, 8 U.S.C. 1404, okay, we know 14 uh, and INA 305, 8 U.S.C. 1405, provide a basis for those people born in these areas, respectively, while they were territories of the United States. Nationals. Not included in the meaning of in the United States. So they're showing you there's a difference right here. There are different things going on here with these phrases. They look almost the same. In our mind, they seem the same, but they are not. This is the understanding, the legal level, the legal style of these things. What do they really mean? So let's check out 8 U.S.C. 1405. That's for persons born in Hawaii. Eight USC fourteen oh four. Born in Alaska. Virgin Islands, Guam. Nationals, but not citizens of the United States. Nationals and citizens of of wait, you know what? I never I never paid close attention to this. Nationals and citizens of United States, not the. There's no the in there. They're not talking about the corporation here. It's not the United States, it's just United States. I just, just caught that. And here they have it highlighted born in the United States, but only the word United States is hyperlinked meaning it, this this does not include include the word the as one statement quotation the united states quotation so a person born in the united states which would be america just to double check it says here when used in the geographical sense so this is why and really in here they should say all the 50 states they get it confused with what you're trying to do. They think you're trying to do some, some crazy stuff because there's two different United States. There's United States and the United States. There it is, good people. There it is. Once again, bringing it down, breaking it down, bringing it to you. Seeing it for yourself. Do your own research. As always, research, research, research. Read, learn, ask questions. But once again, there is with the United States and without 
the United States. All right. This is why there is that confusion out there because they're they are too similar. They need to be all this needs to be made blatantly and obviously clear. And it's not. But we can use the laws and codes as we see fit. But you got to have the proof and the backup to be able to defend it. All right, guys, that's it. Talk to you guys later. Have a great one.